Well, as much as anything, this is a test of the microphone and a test of the DJI Pocket 2, which is a completely new thing to me and is quite exciting. It's a gimbal, it's a pocket cam, it does 4K. Are we in 4K? I have no idea. But what we're here to talk about is uh, dry plate photography. My project uh, during this semester of sustainable practices is going to be all around the work of Edward Mudge. And he was a photographer just on the outskirts of Southampton along what is called the Waterside. So mainly around Hythe and Forley and Dibden and the edge of the New Forest. And he was a photographer from the, the late 19th century through to the mid 20th century. And he shot with dry plates. He was a commercial photographer, had his own studio in Forley, uh, had his own business and sold many, many thousands, I think, of postcards. I'm going to be researching him and researching his family and his work over the coming months. But one of the key things is that he shot on dry plates. And there's an interesting history to dry plate photography with it being more or less invented maybe three or four miles from where I'm sat now. Uh, by a photographer and doctor who was fed up effectively of becoming ill from the fumes of wet plate collodion. So he wanted to invent something which was the same kind of quality, the same kind of standard, the same kind of look, but which didn't have the ill effects of the quite noxious chemicals involved in that particular process. So he wanted to be able to have something which was more environmentally friendly, more health friendly for himself and for others. So Edward Mudge used this process throughout his career. Um, over the course of my research, maybe we'll find out why he never moved on to, to film in the 30s or 40s or 50s or even the 1960s. Um, or maybe we won't. I don't know that for sure. But what I'm going to be doing tonight, ahead of talking to uh, Jason Lane tomorrow, Jason is the man behind J Lane Dry Plates, which we will find out all about tomorrow. Uh, what I'm going to do this evening is process a dry plate. Um, so I can't show you at this stage, well I won't be able to show you at any stage, a, um, a blank dry plate but what I can show you is the, the packaging which Jason uses. Uh, sends them out in very nice boxes from uh, wherever he is in, in the United States of America. Um, I get these from Analog Wonderland. Uh, oh New Hampshire, Brookline, New Hampshire, orthochromatic 10 hand-coated 4x5 silver gelatin plates. Now these are the speed plates, not to be confused with the ordinary plates. The ordinary plates are, I think, ISO 3. These are the speed plates you wouldn't believe. ISO 25, mm. ASA 25, same difference, but not, but yeah, ASA 25. Uh, open and load under darkroom safe light only. I did this in a changing bag earlier to load my film holder. Uh, see reverse side of box for developing instructions. This is what I'm going to be doing this evening. Uh, edges of glass are sharp, open under, only under safe light. Actual plate dimensions, it, it's five by four inch, but uh, they're 100 mil by 126 mil. Tray develop under safe light for five minutes at 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, that's kind of normal tap water-ish temperature, um, about 20 degrees, so in, in centigrade or Celsius as we should use. Uh, in Kodak HC110 dilution B or equivalent, well one HC110 at dilution B is one part of Kodak HC110 to 31 parts of water. So I'm imagining that I'm going to need, um, uh, say, let's just say around 320 mils of, of developer. So that's going to be 10 mils of HC110 and 310 mils of water. We'll just check that later. Um, just so I need to know how much coverage I'm going to get in my trays that I'm going to use, and you'll see those in a little while. So it goes on to say that uh, in, when, once you've made up the developer, you do 30 seconds of agitation at the start, then you agitate for 15 seconds every one minute thereafter, and you um, actually process for a total of five minutes. Then you use an acid stop for 30 seconds. I'm going to have to check this with Jason tomorrow. I don't have, I don't use a stop bath other than just water in an attempt to try and cut down on the amount of chemicals that I'm using. So I'm hoping and praying that, uh, that water is okay in this process. I have developed two plates previously and I used water as the stop bath then and I think it didn't cause any ill effects, but we'll see. Uh, then fix in rapid fixer, same agitation as for development, fix for double the clearing time, four minutes for rapid fix, and then a 30 second water bath rinse at the same temperature, hypo clearing wash, four minutes if desired. I don't know what that means. Um, 
I'll talk to Jason about that tomorrow. Gentle agitation, rinse in room temperature water, 10 minutes if hypo clearing washed, 20 minutes if not. And then if there's any excess emulsion remaining from the hand coating process, you can remove it after rinsing with a dilute bleach wipe or equivalent. Um, that will probably be fine. This says that it was batch number 015 and it expires in December 2021. Um, yeah, so there we go. That, that's what I'm going to be, well, that's what I've shot already this afternoon. Um, I took my Intrepid 4x5, it's a Mark III, uh, and a 90mm lens outside into the garden with my very willing, <laughs> my very willing model, which is my mum, and uh, took a picture at, well, ISO 25. It was f16, and the shutter speed was one quarter of a second. Um, I took the uh, the picture in front of a, a sort of a slightly, it was a, a light side and a, and a shady side with a, a lovely rose tree behind, just to kind of see what we can do in terms of um, a balanced exposure, shadows, highlights. Um, there's also an element of these plates because they're orthochromatic, they're more sensitive to blue light, so they're more sensitive to the UV end of things. So, for example, uh, Victorian photographers sussed out that these were much more suitable in the summer when you have a high UV than in the, you know, the winter or even the early spring or, or late autumn. So today, in June, 5th of June, pretty sunny here, pretty high UV. But as I say, just wanted some sunshine and some shade to give a little bit of, uh, of, a little bit of contrast maybe into the negative. So we shall see all of that and you'll see my setup next. I'm just using my kitchen and I'll be using this red safe light plugged in behind the toaster, but we are not over that side. We are in fact over this side. So I'm going to start off with, this is going to be my tray for development. So I'll be, you know, using this and that'll have the developer in it. This is the neat HC110, which we will make up and we will use this, which I'm 99% sure that this came with the HC110 and it's, it's marked in quite a good way. Um, not quite sure whether we'll get focused, but anyway, um, it's marked out in sort of 5, 10, 15, 20 mils, also seven and a half, 12 and a half, 17 and a half, don't know why, um, but yeah, so that's pretty good. Then this will be the stop buff. Now the reason, so we're going from, from white, which hopefully I'll be able to see what's going on in it, into orange, um, which is the biggest tray, which is just going to have water in it. And I just like to make the differentiation in my head that we're going from like a tray, which is, you know, perfectly good. This one's water, it's bigger. Then we'll be going into this gray tray, which will have the fixer in it. The fix is pre-made in here. Um, you can use it, you know, a number of times. It's a Bellini fixer. The reason I'm using that is because it's sort of a low chemical fixer. Uh, this is my stirrer for stirring the chemicals. This is Alan Wallace, Welsh photographer, astrophotographer. Oh my goodness. Um, check him out. He's absolutely amazing. And I get his calendar every year and it's just, it's great. Anyway, uh, back to this. So we'll be mixing the developer in this using, uh, using this and then washing it afterwards probably by replacing the water in here and just, you know, keeping it going. I've put down newspaper because it's bound to go everywhere and uh, that's what's going to be going on in here. And then this is my drying rack, which is a lot of drying rack for one, uh, one piece of glass, but it's my drying rack. So that's what we're going to be using there. The other very important piece of kit that I didn't discuss earlier was one slightly rubbish latexy glove. Uh, this is because although the fixer that I'm using is relatively low chemical, I still don't want to use my bare hands. I don't, you know, that's going to be water. The developer's fine, but for the fixer, I'm going to try to remember to, uh, to use my glove. So first things first will be to get some water. If I just ran the tap for the hot water, we'd... Um, We'd actually get water at about 55, from memory, about 55 degrees, which is hotter. 
well, some way hotter than we would need. As per usual, I'm not super good at measuring out this. So we filled that to 300 mils. And I've already put aside 10 mils because 1 to 31, HC10, HC110, 1 to 31. Well, let's just see. How much is 300 mils? 300 mils is loads. But I don't know how much you can see there. It's, it's plenty of water, but it's probably only covering half of the tip of my finger. So only, I don't know, maybe a centimeter or so, but that will be enough because I'll be agitating like this. And obviously we've got the depth of the grooves in the tray. Yeah, that'll be fine. So, going to pour this back into here carefully I'm going to pour out my fixer which has got a fly in it <laughs> I don't know whether that's going to help or hinder but there's a fly in there so that's the fixer, top back on, and I can reuse that later. Glove, trying to remember the glove. Um, I can put some water in here. Just think this probably just doesn't want to be cold water. That's probably maybe a touch cold. That is ever so slightly lukewarm to the touch. So that'll be fine. Um, I've got my dark slide that I shot the plate in in the other room where the light is already off. Now what I do remember, just so that you get an idea of time by the way, it's 11 o'clock at night because we're in June. It's actually quite late that it gets actually dark outside. But what I do remember from a previous time developing in here is this strip light emits light quite a long time after it's gone off. And the other thing is that my red safe light doesn't really, <laughs> doesn't really very emit very much light at all. But there we go, right. So 10 mils of HC110 going into 310 mils of water. This is lovely, thick, gloopy stuff. Just gonna find my 10 mil mark on here. Get it somewhere I can see it and gloop it out. There we go, 10 mils. And what you'll find with uh, HC110, this, where it is gloopy, is that it won't all come out. Am I ready to go? Yeah, I'm ready to go. One thing I haven't got is my timer. So I downloaded a timing app for my phone and I'm gonna try and do sensible things like put myself onto airplane mode uh, because that seems like a good thing to do settings I actually know where that is mobile connections yeah airplane mode turn that off go into this thing it's just called big timer the reason that I chose big timer is because it's primarily a dark background with big red numbers, which in the dark is going to be ideal. I'm going to put that on stopwatch mode well out of the way over there, just in case there is any colour given off by it, which, you know, isn't the same as a safe light. I'll rest, rest, <coughs> I'll rest that on the biscuit barrel. Stop me eating the biscuits as well. Right. Final thing to get ready. Well, final thing to get ready is my dry plate holder, which I have had some light leaks. Well, I had some light leaks before, which was as likely to be me as the holder. 
Um, here you can see inside the holder, this is open because I didn't want to put two plates in. So that's one side. And then this is the side with the plate in it exposed. So we'll come back for that in a bit. But let's make up the developer. So HC110 is gloopy. And the problem with it being gloopy is that when you pour it, half of it stays in the vessel that you were pouring it from. So what you need to do is rinse it through several times because if you want 10 mils of developer to make your developing solution and you leave two mils of it hanging around inside this little cup then you've lost 20% 20, 20 haven't you? And I don't know that it would be two mils that was hanging around but if I do this four or five or six times you can see that each time we're getting to a stage where there's nothing left which is ideal. So I'm going to call that done. Uh, I'm going to give it a good mix. The amazing thing with all of, well, most of this stuff is an old friend of mine scoured um, what do they call it, like free ads, but not free ads. Free cycle. A friend of mine scoured free cycle over quite a long period of time and just found me like, I mean, enlargers, which didn't work, but all of the bottles, the um, measuring canisters, the trays, a whole load of old paper. And old paper can be really exciting. If you haven't ever used old paper, whew, the excitement of old paper is real. So five minutes. I'm just going to remind myself of the instructions. Five minutes in the uh, five minutes in the developer, some amount of time in the wash, <laughs> some more amount of time in the fixer, and then a 20 minute wash afterwards. Right, okay, we can do this. But I'm gonna turn the light off now. And um, I think you'll see, well, I don't know how much you're gonna see for the filming, but, um, At some point I'll be sort of aware that there's a glow coming from the kitchen light but we're not there yet and we're not fully dark outside either doesn't have the next door got their kitchen light on but it's five past eleven you know we're not really gonna get very much lighter or anything I've just walked into a chair which is always ideal that's the one that don't leave chairs lying around when uh, when you're wandering about in the dark I also I was going to say, can I even find, can I even find, oh dear, I've made myself an obstacle course. Not ideal. If I fall over, I'm going to blame you. It's always the way you've got to blame somebody else, haven't you? Right. So, yeah, we're going to, uh, going to hit go on the stopwatch and I'm going to ask you to wish me luck. nearly dropped everything. Haven't poured the developer in there yet. Schoolboy error. Can I even see in there yet? Don't know. Uh, agitate continuously for the first however long, wasn't it? So we're 30 seconds in and we're agitating continuously for the first, I think it was 30 seconds. So I'm aiming for one minute here. I'm not loving the bright green light on my microphone but I'm hoping that that wouldn't be strong enough to worry about. I also think that I've put it face down. Well, I wish I'd put it face up. So we may not have got much in the way of development there. Hmm. Notch in the top right hand corner or in the bottom left, yeah. Okay, so I put it in face down, that's probably not ideal. 
uh, it's definitely not ideal because that would have given a very strange, I think it would have been stuck to the bottom and perhaps might have given a, a bit of a an unusual development for the first time there. But anyway, we'll keep going. So we're a minute in, so it was to agitate every 15, 15 seconds in every minute. Yeah, putting it in upside down was probably not ideal. Don't know why I'm whispering. <laughs> That's the dark for you, isn't it? Anyway, I can definitely see, I don't know whether you can, but I can definitely see um, some areas developing. I think I can see the houses behind where my mum was stood. I think I can perhaps see what might very well have been the rows. I think I can tell where my mum was stood. Uh, I'm not sure. Right, so we're two minutes in, so another 15 seconds agitation. Just gently rocking the tray backwards and forwards, letting the developer do its work. We're developing by inspection. What that means is that I can see what's going on because we're, we're not developing it in a tank or in complete darkness. We can use the red light. So we're developing by inspection, but I'm trusting the instructions, directions put down by Jason Lane on the back of the plates that five minutes, I'm trusting that five minutes is the right amount of time. We're using the right dilution, we're at the right temperature, approximately, you know, approximately enough. Um, you know, we're pretty, we're pretty solid. Just moving around the empty dry plate. We're coming up for <coughs> coming up for three minutes. Um, I don't know what you can see of that, but I can see quite a lot of dark areas. Now they're going to be the highlights, um, but I can. Well, it's funny how your eyes adjust, but I feel like I can see quite a lot of detail in there. So that's the 15 seconds agitation for three minutes. We've got a couple of minutes to go trying to only use one hand in the chemicals. I'm only, I mean, it's water that it's going into next. Um, I could try and put my glove on. Yeah, why don't I put my glove on? I hate gloves. I hate the way they make your hands sweat. I hate the stink. The stink of a sweaty glove hand. I really do not like it but I'm a good boy, so we have glove hand. Right, coming up to four minutes. Hopefully the cock up at the start hasn't uh, caused too much in the way of problems. I can't tell from this whether this is gonna be, you know, badly exposed, nicely exposed, light leaks, artifacts on it. Um, give it just one more rock there and that's its 15 seconds agitation. So that's, well, we're heading towards five minutes, guys. It's probably not the world's most exciting video. <laughs> what did you do? I watched a very dark room with a man who was off camera who was talking about sweaty glove hand. Watch out for the sweaty glove hand. Oh my God, it's the sweaty glove hand. <clears throat> So that's the sweaty glove hand. Right, uh, coming up for five minutes. Just gonna have to trust the process, guys. Gonna have to trust the process. I'm looking at quite a lot of dark, but I'm seeing some, some light. You cannot tell when it's wet. You cannot tell when it's dark. This is not the time to be judging it. And we're gonna put it from a white tray now into an orange tray. <laughs> that really is not gonna be the time to judge it, but there is detail on there for sure. Absolutely for sure there is detail on there. So usually if it was film, I mean, I don't use a stop bath, I use water, but usually I would use a stop for I don't know, 30 seconds a minute, flush it through a tank, empty it out. You know, you'd be doing quite a lot more with water than you would with a stop bath, but that's fine. No chemicals, I'm happy with that. So we've had a good couple of minutes in the water stop bath. 
try and pick up by the edges because the emulsion could still be quite fragile at this stage. Dropped it in. Uh, I'm going to rock with this hand. And we're going to kind of, it said do the same, didn't it? Do the same for the fix as you did for the develop. So agitate it non-stop for the first 30 seconds and then 15 seconds every minute there on. Unfortunately, because this is a grey tray and it's the furthest away from the safe light, you probably can't see anything and I can barely see anything because you can't see what's going on at all in there. So maybe, um, I don't know, maybe something, maybe something that I haven't quite decided yet. I don't know. Anyway, um, I'm going to move you along slightly. I'm going to try not to trip over my obstacle course. It's had 10 minutes in the fix. It's got to be enough. Turn the light on, fingers crossed. Hope for the best. We've got something. We've got something. So, uh, because I'm a good boy, I'm using my gloves, although <laughs> I'm sure that it, uh, I'm sure that you end up with the stuff comes, the gloves aren't waterproof. Let's just put that out there straight away. The gloves are not waterproof. Anyway, I'm gonna just kind of drain off a little bit of the fix, but I uh, don't know how much that you can see. But that is a dry plate negative. And do you know what? Okay. There's a lot of tonal range in there. Well, there's not necessarily a lot of tonal range <laughs> in there. <laughs> I should clarify what I'm saying. Um, there's some very dark bits and there's some very light bits. Um, and there's my neighbor's house and the back, our back garden. And there's my mum and there's a rose bush. So I think when we got to the big reveal, the, uh, the camera may have reset itself, but that's, that's our washing, that is our washing negative. Cactus collection, some of. Anyway, so this is our washing negative, which if I was washing it in a white tray, <laughs> you'd be able to see a lot better but I'm washing it in an orange tray because reasons. But I feel like this is okay. Um, you can quite clearly see the area of shadow next to my mum. You can quite clearly see the housing behind. You can see my mum, you can see her eyes, you can see her hair, her hands. I feel like this is probably okay. We'll know more when we come to digitise it tomorrow, because obviously I have to leave it to dry now. It's half 11 at night. Um, but I feel like you know, this is good progress. And once it's washed, I'll, um, I'll hold it up against a, a lighter background so we can have a good look at it there. We've, we've done it. 20 minutes of washing. So we're still very keen not, not to touch the surface of this. It's wet. It's... Um, needs to dry. I don't know whether there's any amount of the emulsion which needs to harden. I'm trying not to drop it because obviously if I drop it, um, look, just noticed in Alan Wallace's thing, Comet Neowise, it says not to loosen clouds and Comet Neowise above Carreg Kenen Castle in Wales. And I'm sorry for butchering the Welsh. Anyway, look, this needs to dry. It might need to harden. Um, I don't want to scratch it. I don't want to drop it. I don't want to break the grass. But as much as we can see. You know, we've got something, right? We've definitely got something. Okay. We got a color cast from the cupboard and from the fluorescent light. But you know, that's a negative. I suppose we should look at it that way around really because that's uh that's the true way round with the neighbor's house to the left anyway listen that's not bad is it not bad oh we've got a little uh
So anyways, we've got a few little bits of emulsion left on it. Anyway, we can talk to Jason about that tomorrow. It's pretty cool.